But let me think back to the wild time that was three weeks ago. <laughs> Every project is a roller coaster. Maybe it's just me, but it seems to be a roller coaster every time. Because at the beginning of a project, you have this amazing idea and you have nothing. So sometimes it can get very daunting and very stressful. And there's a lot of like late nights of tapping your head and saying, how the heck are we gonna figure this out? Originally, this video was more of an artistic experimental piece, focusing largely on special effects. However, there was nothing really emotionally gravitating towards that piece. I eventually kind of scrapped that idea and started paying attention and reading into the artist Casey's social media and looking for a deeper meaning behind his lyrics. As you listen to his music, it feels like he's taking you on a journey. With what we do here, we're, we're always very ambitious and this was a project where we wanted to create a bit of a further resonation and a bit of a better understanding into who the artist is as a person. We were looking for a specific cabin that was in the woods, um, so I thought it would be actually quite easy to find a house that was a bit older, located around some forest, and it proved very difficult. And cut! One of the hardest challenges about putting something together like this at the kind of indie level is finding locations that work for the character, for the logistics of the piece. Everything kind of has to come together. So th this cabin here was actually very difficult to find. We're actually out in Chilliwack, BC, which is actually quite far. And we scouted so many different types of cabins, older homes, but we couldn't really find anything with the character that we wanted. Uh, this house was actually built in the 1930s and a lot of the furniture is actually still from the 1930s. So it's got a lot of character, a lot of history, uh, and it's gonna look really great on camera. S something really cool about our location, uh, and it always ends up working out like this. It it's always like better in the end than you would ever expect. The owner of the location actually had a 1966 GMC red truck, which we oh, felt yeah. would perfectly oh, fit the character of the grandfather. And we ended up using it and it helped add a lot of production value. And Directing a narrative piece and a performance take is very different. And quite honestly, the performance way was what felt comfortable for me but listening to the storytelling and the lyrics, I really wanted to bring further recognition with the visuals. Not to mention, I find if you're not pushing yourself to get outside your comfort zone, you're no longer growing. There's so many visuals that have to say so much and to find elements to allow them to, to bring that to screen and convey them is a very difficult thing. You only have so long to tell a story. You need to make sure that every shot counts and actually helps the story. And so that's why pre-production is so important, to plan out every single shot, to plan out exactly how it's gonna be done, to plan out exactly what you're gonna be seeing in your frame so that there's no surprises on the day. On the day, there's so much happening. And it is at every level. You could be you know, a crew of five people to a crew of 150 people. And there's always things that come up here and there and you need that foundation to fall back to. And it's not to take away from being able to go onto a project and get those spontaneous moments, but it is that foundation that you can always fall back to. You know, in the bathroom scene, in my storyboard, we were never shooting kind of top down looking into the, the artist's eyes. And I got into the bathroom and I was looking there and I was chatting with the cinematographer, our gaffer and first AC, and we we're trying to find a different angle that we could get something that feels really abstract and very visceral in that scene. And so I actually then jumped up on the counter of the bathroom and looked down and I was like, here it is. This like, eyes fluttering looks super, super sick. Oh, okay. So we were able to come up with this really unique and dynamic looking image by standing on the sink in the bathroom. This is insane. <laughs> well, the, the first day on Little Devil was amazing. We shot at uh, Fortune Sound Club and, and shout out to them for allowing us to use that space. It's a rare occasion being in a club in the morning and not winding down from your nightly send early start. So it's always good. We're almost done our first scene of the day. So we're, we're going to kind of be shooting in this area for the morning up until lunch. And then we're going to be moving downstairs for our kind of fight club type of scene. Smacking. The fun thing about film is that there's one little thing that can go wrong that can send a spiral to your entire day and all of this planning. And so my goal as a producer is to create kind of a, a, a creative safety net 
for the team to work and for the team to be creative. And if that's in place, then you know everybody's comfortable and excited to do what they have to do and, and make a, a great piece. I have a bit of a background in the boxing community, so I invited some of my friends who are really talented fighters. And uh, we wanted it to look real, so we put our all into it. And there was definitely some, some genuine shots played yesterday. For this project, we tried a few different unique camera effects. One of them was a split diopter. The cinematographer, Chris Clark, brought this effect to my attention. I hadn't really seen it before. And he says, hey, look what you can do with these split diopters. I think it's going to be very beneficial to hammering home the effect and the story to really, really sell the fact that there's some cloudy vision happening in this character's mind. And so what it does is it kind of blurs your image on one side and then keeps one, one side in focus. And so it created a really cool effect during our fight scene to put you in that character's perspective and make you feel like you're with him and you're distraught with him as well. Casey's kind of a wreck at the, at the moment that we're showing him and he's hitting rock bottom. So we thought it would be way more appropriate to go handheld for a lot of that scenes. Cause it, one, it makes you feel like you're right in with the character and two, it's, it's less smooth and fluid and, and elegant and it, it feels a bit more raw and gritty. And so we use that for, for most of our day one where we're in Casey's head and we're following his story as he kind of hits rock bottom. We decided to go with Steadicam day two because it was a lot calmer in the sense of where our character's mind was at. So we were dealing with the grandfather and the grandfather was kind of at peace. He wasn't, he was kind of going on with his day-to-day -day life. And so we wanted to be more fluid with that and keep it smooth. And we contrast that with when we're in Casey's light. Just seeing how the crew was able to like come together to make the emotion really come across on screen. And then also working with Jim and, and trying to push him to really get into the headspace as though this is his life. I found it was really rewarding and powerful to bring that imagery to life. Right away, as soon as we got into it, I could really feel the, um, uh, just sort of the sense of artistry of it. We're really lucky to work with such a great steady cam operator, Bjorn. He's a steady cam op on, you know, tons of different shows and movies. He's done a bunch of our projects and he's just insanely dialed. So yesterday we were shooting a lot on sticks and handheld, um, and today we're on steady cam. The main difference is, is you have to set up your build specifically so that the steady cam operator can balance it. And then on top of that, it's not much more difficult than handheld. It's actually, in my opinion, I find it easier if the steady cam operator is a good operator. If they know how to keep their distances and everything like that. It saves a lot of job as the first AC to pull focus and keep people sharp. There were, there were a lot of talented people that we brought on for this one. A lot of connections that we've made through the union world and through uh, feature films and television shows and different commercials that we've been on. And we're, we're very fortunate to have these specialized, amazing people that are willing to come out for a discounted rate and pretty much give us their all uh, in being able to create things. We can't do it without the support of the Vancouver film industry. And roll camera. I am the earth, I am the wind, I am the fire and the moon, I am the evil and the devil lives inside you. You cannot buy your freedom, I don't ever die. I am the evil and the devil, I come to take your life. I am the evil and the devil. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes of the music video, Little Devil. If you have any questions for us, please leave them in the comments below. And if you haven't checked out the video already, please go over to Teller in the Tale and leave a comment there and let us know what you think.